my viewers and welcome back to my channel subscribe like and don't forget to be part of this conversation by sharing your thoughts in the comment section down below i will come you to an interesting conversation about identity history and the complexities of belonging now in this video a comment has sparked a heated debate about what it means to be native american and who has the right to claim this land as their own but in this video a sister isn't having it with clarity and conviction she's setting the record straight about the difference between being native american and indigenous now she's taking on the myths and misconceptions that have been perpetrated for far too long and she's not afraid to speak truth to power from the land bridge theory to the impact of european colonization she's breaking down the historical facts and shedding light on the complex societies and cultures that existed long before columbus arrived now this isn't just a conversation about identity it's about justice, equity, and the right to claim one's heritage. So join me as we take a look into this critical discussion and let's explore the nuances of what it means to be Indigenous, Native American, and American. Take a look at a sister's video. I will be right back. Silly rabbit. I hate to tell you, but I'm Native American and not an imported Indian from India. We were here first. It's our land. Say it isn't so. Whites and blacks and every other color and nationality came later. Study. Is that right? Let's get into it, y'all. <laughs> you sure you want to do this, Miss Lady? There's a huge difference between a Native American and an indigenous person. Okay. Even our Native here. Even Hispanics are Native here. Even a person whose roots are from Africa and their parents come here and they give birth. Guess what? Their children and their children's children will be Native. Anyone who comes here to America and they settle and they have children, their children are natives, okay? Now, indigenous people were here before all of the natives came, okay? This is why they called you people Native Americans and not indigenous people. Exhibit A, your people came over a land bridge, huh? To North America and uh, from Siberia and uh, also from Mongolia as well. And you guys became, you see this, became Native Americans, okay, of North America, the Americas, period, because people like you are represented all throughout the Americas, <laughs> and this right here is about all of you, but prior to y'all coming, like it says, when Christopher Columbus came, guess what? The truth is that there were already societies and cultures and people with religion that had complex societies that were already here years prior to your people coming over on a land bridge. Imagine that. And those of you who had ancestors that did not come over the land bridge, guess what? You are a result of the Europeans, indigenous so-called black women. Hmm? The indigenous people, you people are just a product of that. Huh? People who look like you that are light-skinned are not the original people anywhere on this earth. The true indigenous people on this earth are my complexion, lighter and darker. Not your skin complexion. We can't come from people who look like you. Dark-skinned people cannot come from pale-skinned people. It's the other way around. So we were actually here first. According to science, uh, these folks right here are actually a genetic mutation, like an oops, an ouch, uh, not supposed to be, not supposed to have happened. Imagine a world where everyone had brown skin tens of thousands of years ago. And what does it say? That was the case. This is what scientists say. That's not what I said. This is what the scientists say. You all came later, much later. More scientific evidence suggests that it's been known for years that all non-Africans or indigenous people, I like to say, because this whole out of Africa theory is also a lie. They descended from a small group, perhaps only a few dozen individuals who left the continent between 50,000 and 100,000 years ago. OK, so the continent that they're, they're talking about is actually the caves of the Denisovan and the Caucasus Mountains, because that's actually where they came from, not an actual continent. So if you people only came into existence about 50,000 to 100,000 years ago, who do you think was already here prior to that? You guessed it right. People who look like me were here much longer than that. huh? We existed far longer. In fact, science biology states that people with lighter skin are far genetically weaker than people um, with the existence of melanin, heavy melanin, nine ether beings. The study also suggests that lighter skinned people are far less diverse than the so-called black compatriots. Why is that? It's because so-called black women carry the Eve gene and we are capable of being able to make 
all different types of races and the variation of those races, meaning different eye colors, skin complexions, hair textures, and things of that nature. We are the only people on this earth who can do that. So how is it that you people were here before us? You can't even do that. You are part of the people that science and biology is talking about here. Let's be clear. And despite all of the reports that you hear in the news about the so-called black people being predisposed to this illness and that illness and everything, it's because all of those illnesses are created through the food and everything that they give us to eat and the things that they put in the food. According okay. to biology, they're saying that that mutation of uh, Anglo-Saxons, of the fair-skinned people, is actually quite harmful. There's harmful mutations that, that are a result of this. Huh? Let's talk about the mutation of people being born with tails. Huh? Us darker skinned people aren't born with tails. That's you lighter skinned people because y'all came out of the Caucasus mountains and y'all were Neanderthals. You come from Neanderthal. That Neanderthal gene was mostly bred out by mating with people who look like me, indigenous people on the earth. More biological evidence proves that lighter skin is quite recessive. People with heavy melanin, which we are called nine ether beings, we actually are more dominant. You see this on the bottom? We're more dominant than you. So again, how can you people have been here first? There's no way. So let's talk about this genetic diversity. So according to scientists, biologists, it clearly stated that the Anglo-Saxons are far less diverse. Now brace yourself, darling. Native Americans show even far less genetic diversity than even Europeans, having descended from a few thousand people who entered North America nearly 10,000 years ago. Now, according to this, the earth is 4.54 billion years old. And you pale skin people have only been around for roughly, they say, 10,000 to 15,000 years. So please tell me how you are first, how you are the original people, how anyone of pale skin are the indigenous people on this. Earth. Show that the new world was discovered tens of thousands of years earlier than previously believed. Certainly well before the time of the American Indians. Clues to the identity of the first Americans are emerging in rock shelters in the northeast and southeast of Brazil. Archaeologists there have recently unearthed human remains. Prehistoric skulls were found buried in layers of soil 9 to 12,000 years old. They are the oldest skulls in the Americas. And this is the oldest of them all. The skull of a young woman, nicknamed Luthia by scientists. Can she tell us who the first Americans were? He's been using a standard and reliable archaeological measure, the shape of the skull, to find out what race she belonged to. He fully expected Luthia to be a mongoloid, an ancestor of the American Indians. But then he fed the measurements into the computer. When we start running the computer and uh, seeing the results, uh, it was amazing because we realized that uh, uh, the statistics, the quantitative analysis we were doing was not showing just people to be mongoloid. In fact, the analysis was showing just people was anything except mongoloid. So who was Luthia? And where did she come from? National CAT scan of Luthia's skull in order to build a replica. The cast was then given to Richard Neve of the University of Manchester in England, one of the world's leading forensic artists to recreate her features. that has all the features that you associate with a knee face. The um, proportions of the face, it doesn't say anything about it being a mongoloid. I'm going to need you to pick your job off the floor, darling. Pick it up. Huh? As I stated earlier, my people were here first. We are the true indigenous people here in the Americas.
make no mistake about that. Now, the sister's response is a breath of fresh air. In a conversation often muddled by misinformation and myth, her distinction between Native American and Indigenous is crucial and backed by historical and anthropological evidence. The fact that Indigenous people had complex societies, cultures, and religions prior to the arrival of European colonizers is well documented. The idea that Native Americans migrated to the Americas via the land bridge theory is also supported by archaeological and genetic research. Moreover, the legacy of European colonization and the impact of grape and violence on indigenous populations is a painful but necessary truth. The resulting trauma and cultural erasure have had lasting effects on indigenous communities. Her statement that dark-skinned people cannot come from pale-skinned people is also supported by genetic research, which shows that skin pigmentation evolved as humans migrated to different parts of the world. It's refreshing to see someone speaking truth to power and centering indigenous voices in this conversation. Now, according to research, the term Indian was originally used by Christopher Columbus to refer to the people he encountered in the Caribbean, mistaken believing he had reached the East Indies. Now, over time, the term became widely used to refer to all the indigenous people of the Americas. However, it's important to note that the term Indian is not entirely accurate as it erases the distinct identities and cultures of the various indigenous people of the Americas. Indigenous people are the descendants of the people who inhabited the Americas, the Pacific and parts of Asia and Africa prior to European colonization. Indigenous people continue to thrive throughout the world today. Generally, indigenous refers to those people with pre-existing sovereignty who are living together as a community prior to contact with settler populations, most often, though not exclusively, Europeans. Indigenous is the most inclusive term as there are indigenous people on every continent throughout the world such as the Sami in, in Sweden, the First Nations in Canada, Mayas in Mexico and Guatemala and the Ainu in Japan fighting to remain culturally intact on their land bases. Indigenous people refer to a group of indigenous people with a shared national identity such as Navajo or Sami and is the equivalent of saying the American people. Native American and American Indian are terms used to refer to people living with what is now the United States prior to the European contact. Now, there are so many explanations to this topic, and according to this article, it says that the term Indian, in reference to the original inhabitants of the American continent, is said to derive from Christopher Columbus, a 15th century boat person. Some say he used the term because he was convinced he had arrived in the Indies, his intended destination. Others say the term refers to his diary entry in which he describes the natives as a people in God. Whether from confusion or romanticism, Indian is a word of illusion, not a description of reality, but the word has stuck. It is commonly used by indigenous people of this continent to refer to themselves in a generic way as a supplement to their real names. It is used throughout federal Indian law, the domain of United States law, concerned with rights and status of the original people of this land. Native American is a phrase coined in the liberal years of the 1960s to replace Indian with a supposedly more appropriate term. Regardless of the intent, the term is no more appropriate than its predecessor. America is derived from Amerigo Vespucci, a 16th century Italian navigator who was once said to be the discoverer of the continent. How can the people who were already here be named with his name? Now, other generic words are also problematic. Native and indigenous can rightfully be applied to anyone or thing born in a place, not only those who were born first. Aboriginal refers only to what was here from the beginning, but the concept of beginning poses problems too. Perhaps the best course to refer to a people by the name they take for themselves sometimes, this means using a word that means we are the only true people, but at least it does not mean using a word that means you are who others say you are. Now, I strongly disagree with the article's assertion that the term indigenous can be used to refer to anyone. The sister's explanation in the video is a much needed correction to the watered down understanding of indigenity that has become all too common. Her insistence that being indigenous is not just about physical presence, but about cultural, spiritual, and ancestral connection is a crucial distinction that must be recognized. It's astonishing how often the term indigenous is thrown around without regard for its true meaning and significance. The idea that anyone can be considered indigenous simply because they've lived in a place for a while is a 
stark example of cultural appropriation and erasure. The truth is indigeneity is not an identity that can be claimed by just anyone. It's a specific experience that is tied to the histories, cultures, and traditions of people. Reducing it to a mere geographical marker is a disservice to the very real struggles and injustices that communities have faced. We have finally come to the end of the video, but what do my viewers have to say? Share your thoughts and knowledge on what you think and what you know about this topic in the comment section and let's educate each other. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.